Ready? Go. Here they come. So just give them a minute to connect to audio. Should be streaming now. Ooh. All right. Ooh, we've got quite a crowd today. Yeah. Hi, hi. All right. We have people still connecting. So we'll give them a couple of minutes. Hello. Look at all these beautiful shining faces. Yeah. Everybody's so excited. <laughs> Everybody's ready to see animals. They really are. Oh, I can't wait to see them either. <laughs> okay. Give people a couple more or another minute before I introduce you, Cindy. Or actually, it looks like we have everybody. So I guess I'll just go ahead and get started. <clears throat> okay. Well, first, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, Dallas Public Library. This is our virtual event uh, for today. We have our zookeeper animal guessing game. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, and we have Miss Cindy with us from All About animals. Uh, she is actually local here in Dallas. Um, she does in-person shows, but luckily she's teaming up with Teachers of Nature to give us this wonderful virtual program where we're going to get to see a lot of cool live animals. So are you guys ready for our program today? You want to see some animals? You do? I see lots of clapping and smiles. Okay, well, <laughs> over to Miss Cindy and she will take it away. All right, perfect. So I am going to spotlight my video first of all, so I get big on your screen. Um, that way you can see the animals better. You'll be able to see um, my screen and a um, couple of things. If you have a question, I encourage you to use the chat, okay? So if you have an adult with you that can use the chat and type your question in there. Um, we will be taking those questions um, basically uh, between animals. So if you have a question about the animal that I have out that maybe I didn't tell you about, then I encourage you to use the chat to ask those questions, okay? If I ask you something, um, I can still see you guys. If you have your camera on, you can put a thumbs up. Uh, if everything is good, all right. Katie gave me a thumbs up, awesome. And uh, if, you, um, if you do have something that maybe I missed, then again, the chat is going to be the best way to um, kind of ask me something, all right? Okay, perfect. So we are going to do a super fun game, and it is a zookeeper's game of animal facts. So I have been a zookeeper for... Um, about 35 years. So I was saying 30 years, but then I actually looked at when I graduated college and um, I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but I realized it was actually 35 years that I've been a zookeeper. So uh, I've been a zookeeper for a long time. I have about 60 animals of my own that I take care of and uh, help me out when I go to places like uh, libraries and schools and birthday parties and also help me out while I am teaching online. So I'm super duper excited that you guys are going to get to meet um, some of my animals. All right, so let's start. And oops, got to go back here. There we go. We're going to start off with some fun facts about alligators. So alligators can have up to four 1,800 teeth in their lifetime. That is a lot of teeth. And you can see those teeth, they are, well, doesn't look like that alligator has been to the dentist in a while, does it? Mm -mm, not really. And that's because 
Alligators only keep their teeth for a very short time. So they usually replace their teeth. They lose their old tooth as they grow and a new tooth comes in. And it's already sitting right underneath that old tooth and it's bigger and it's stronger. So if they break their teeth, they're like, oh, well, no big deal. I broke my tooth. I'm gonna have a new one coming in very shortly. Um, if they lose it, again, no big deal. So they are always replacing their teeth and getting brand new teeth. Um, Just so like this smart. alligator was a um, was a live alligator at some point, but I got it as a bio fact. So something that is used for teaching. Um, and another really cool thing about alligators is that when alligators lay their eggs, um, alligator parents of their mama usually stays on the nest and protects the eggs. Sometimes she'll go months at a time without eating anything if she feels like there might be danger to the eggs, but she will stay on the nest and she won't leave them. And depending on the temperature, they will either hatch as all boys or all girls. That's it. All boys are all girls. So they don't have brothers and sisters. It's either all brothers or all sisters. And that is dependent on the temperature, which is really cool. Um, so someone asked what happens if the teeth run out? I saw that. Um, so if the teeth run out, then, um, well, they probably won't, but then you'll have a toothless alligator, I guess. <laughs> but usually their teeth don't run out. They last for quite a while. All right, so let's talk about a cool animal that we might have in our very own backyard. This is an opossum. So I kind of wanted to stick to the um, those facts about opossum teeth and they have 52 teeth in their mouth. So they have more teeth than any other mammal in the world. And sometimes people think that opossums can hang from their tails, right? And they can when they're babies. But once they get older and their bodies are too heavy, their tails are not strong enough anymore for them to be able to hang from. So they can hang from their tails when they are babies, but usually they end up um, losing that ability to hang from their tails. So can they hang from their tails? for a little bit they can. Let's see, um, I love this. You guys are um, <laughs> you guys are guessing here, like, can they or can't they? That is great. Okay, so let's move on to something called keratin. So keratin is what makes up our hair. Keratin is what our hair is made out of. Keratin is what porcupine quills are made out of. Um, our fingernails, and even rhinoceros horn. So keratin is a pretty amazing um, fiber. And let me see, I've got my handy dandy porcupine quills here. These are some porcupine quills. Those are really big, aren't they? Yikes. Yes, porcupine quills are very, very sharp and they're very strong. And this will definitely help to protect an animal if a predator we're running into it yeah that's not going to feel very good so something else that is carrot covered in keratin is this little friend right here this is pinky and pinky is a hedgehog now she is curled up into a little tiny spiky ball right now but wait i think i see a nose peeking out oh it's going to come out. I know it is. I see her. Her little nose is going to start peeking out here. But you know what? This is not the time when she is usually awake. She wakes up at nighttime. So she's a nocturnal animal. And nocturnal animals are awake all night looking for food. She would be awake looking for insects and bugs. Those are her favorite treats. Anybody like insects and bugs? Anybody ever eaten any insects or bugs? No, no thumbs up. Guess what? I've eaten chocolate covered crickets before. You know what they tasted like? They tasted like chocolate. <laughs> they were covered with that. But I was kind of glad I didn't know what they tasted like inside the actual cricket. But there's her nose. I see it. 
So that long nose is really good at sniffing out insects and bugs that are hiding underground. She has a very, very amazing and powerful sense of smell. And any kind of beetle or larva or snail or slug or ant or um, any really thing that is a grub that's hiding under that soil, she's going to be able to smell it and dig it up. Now, of course, you can barely see her little legs because they're very short. Oh, there they are. These little tiny legs that aren't really going to be able to carry her very quickly, right? So because she is actually a very slow moving animal, that means that she can't outrun her predators. Her predators are going to be jackals and hyenas and sometimes even lions if they're really, really hungry. So she needs to be able to protect herself and curling up into a little spiky ball of keratin is the way that she does it because nobody likes to take a bite of cactus, right? Uh-uh, not at all. So this is definitely the way that she is going to protect herself. All right, so do we, did we have any questions in the chat about our little hedgehog, Pinky? There's one question, Cindy. Um, somebody asked, how do you get those? And I'm guessing they're talking about the quill on the hedgehog or the, I guess. <laughs> Oh, the, about the, the quill. Okay, so, well, yeah. yeah, the porcupine quills I got from a porcupine that I worked with, and um, quills fall out just like our hair falls out. So, you know how when you brush your hair, and you might see hair in your hairbrush, because it's always kind of being replaced. You lose the old hairs and you get new hairs. Well, that is exactly what hedgehogs and porcupines do also. They lose their hairs because that's what it's made out of. Their little quills are made out of hairs. So I hope I answered that. Um, all right, so let's see here what we are going to uh, see next. This, is an animal called a binturong. Can I see a thumbs up? Has anybody ever seen a binturong before? I see a lot of heads shaking, a lot of thumbs down. Yeah, they're kind of an interesting animal, um, an unusual animal, not very common. And binturongs, actually, I don't think, nope, they don't have them in the Zala Zoo. Um, so binturongs come from Southeast Asia. They live in the rainforest and they live up in the trees. And the amazing thing about binturongs is they smell like fresh buttered popcorn. So they almost smell like if you had gone to the movies. They have this very distinct and um, exciting smell. I like their smell. Some fun kangaroo facts. Um, most people don't realize that kangaroos can swim, but they can. They actually do. They are good swimmers. Um, when they get in the water, they can move their feet apart from each other so they can paddle. But when they're on land, they have to move their feet together. So he, see how these hopping feet are together? They can't move one in front of the other. And they also cannot go backwards. So kangaroos cannot hop backwards. If you wanted to do a little backwards contest, you would definitely win against kangaroo. They have no idea how to go backwards at all. So animal pouches are really interesting. These are three different animals with three different pouches. So first we have a kangaroo. Then we have a koala, and then we have a sugar glider. Now, let's talk about their pouches. A kangaroo pouch goes this way, opens this way, the babies come out this way. Hello, peeking out of mama's pouch, right? Koalas, their pouch opens backwards. So the koala baby, hello, is looking from the bottom. Super weird, right? And the sugar glider pouch opens this way. So little babies, hello and hello. They're looking out of the sides. But are you ready for the weirdest Sloop Keeper fact? <gasps> Opossum pouches are round. 
That's right. Opossum pouches are round and they have a flap of skin that goes all the way around. So that is really super weird um, that their pouches open um, basically in the middle. So we're going to see if we can bribe this little pouched friend out. And let's see, how about using the chat? If you know what a pouched animal is called, what their scientific name is called, then go ahead and put it in the chat. But while you're doing that, our little friend Spirit here is going to join us. Spirit is a sugar glider. She's the one that you saw in the picture on that slide. And she is um, a female, so she has a pouch and her pouch opens this way. So it's a slit down her belly and she would be able to put one baby in one side and one in the other. Um, let's see, Courtney, did we get an answer of what it is called if you are a pouched animal, what they're called? Those kangaroos, those wallabies, those, um, those wombats. Did anybody guess it? No answers yet. No answers yet. All right, I'm going to give it to you. Um, they are called marsupials. So all of those animals together are called marsupials. They are a family of marsupials. Oh, looks like someone oh, got it. Really looks like Naomi got it. Mm -hmm. All right. So sugar gliders, um, they are called sugar gliders because they love sugary, delicious, sweet things. Right now, she is eating a dandelion yogurt treat that is made for chinchillas, but she enjoys them also. And they do glide from tree to tree. So they have this little flap of skin on each side that is attached from their wrist to their ankle. And <laughs> she's like, okay, I'm done. Um, and it is called a patagium. And the patagium is what they use to catch air underneath and be able to glide from tree to tree. And the longest distance that they have been seen gliding was about half the distance of a football field. So about 60 yards. That is really far. Jumping from one tree to another. All right. Oh, it looks like a couple of friends got marsupials. Good job. Okay. Let's talk about scorpions. Most people don't realize that scorpion mamas are actually really, really good mamas and they carry their babies on their backs. See these little white things right there? Those are scorpion babies. Yeah. And scorpions will carry their babies on their back and they also glow in the dark. So if you were to go into the desert or go looking for scorpions, if you bring a black light, which is one of those purple flashlights, and you were to shine it around, you would be able to find scorpions because they would glow in the dark. Kind of cool. Oh, let's see here. Geckos. I think everybody knows what a leopard gecko is, right? I think everybody knows what leopard geckos. They're super duper popular. Did you know that they are the most popular reptile pet kept in the United States? Yep, lots and lots of people keep leopard geckos as pets. But the cool thing about them is that um, when they shed, they actually eat the skin that comes off. So they eat their sheds. That would be like us eating our clothes. Do any of you eat your clothes? No. Yeah, we don't. We just kind of um, either hand-me-downs, we use them for hand-me-downs, or we kind of just get, put them away and get rid of them. But leopard geckos don't want to waste. So instead, they eat their shed. And not only does that get it away so predators don't find them, but it also makes sure that they didn't waste a lot of energy getting rid of it and taking it off their bodies. And then it just sits there and goes to waste. So they get a lot of nutrition from it 
They get a lot of protein from it. Kind of weird. I think I would rather get protein for maybe from some from from some lentils or some beans or something like that <laughs> rather than eating my skin. But that is something that they do. Um, another really cool thing is I'm going to turn big boy around here and show you his tail. He has a gigantic tail, doesn't he? Really, really big. Well, that tail is used to store fat. He's got a lot of fat storage in there, which means that he is healthy. He's been eating well. And just in case he had some time where he couldn't find food, then he would be able to use that fat storage in that tail and he would be able to kind of soak it up into his body, absorb it. And those days when he couldn't find food wouldn't be such a big deal. And there's another animal that uses fat storage in its body. Some of them have one hump. Some of them have two humps. Does anybody know what those are? Mm, let's see. I'm watching the chat. Oh, Naomi got it really fast. Camels. That's right. Camels also store fat in their humps. I know a lot of people always say, oh, yeah, they store water in their humps. No, they actually store fat in their humps. Um, all right. So let's see here. Do they bite? Um, well, they can bite. They do have teeth. But um, most of the time, they are really, really um, calm animals. And that's why most people keep them as pets, because they are really, really calm. But that's a big boy. And believe it or not, um, uh, my, other, um, my other gecko was shedding today. So her name is Jazzy. And she was shedding today when I went over there. Okay. Let's see here. Moving on. Let's talk about something called parthenogenesis. Has anybody ever heard of parthenogenesis? Probably not, right? Well, parthenogenesis means that um, the female walking sticks or the whatever the animal may be, they will lay fertilized eggs and those eggs will hatch as an exact copy or clone of their mother. So this right here is Vanessa and Vanessa, she is a walking stick or a stick bug. And I had the first Vanessa about five years ago and I only had one walking stick. She laid eggs. Those eggs hatched. They were all females. And then they laid eggs. Those hatched again, all females and so on and so on. So this is my fifth generation of walking sticks. So they multiply all by themselves, lay fertilized eggs that will hatch on their own. And um, also I have, um, there's different animals that can do that. Um, Komodo dragons can do that. Chickens can do that. Some chickens and some turkeys. So there are quite a few animals that can do that. Now, uh, she has six legs. Who can tell me what that means that she is if she has six legs? Anybody in the chat looking, watching, watching? Insects. Insect. Oh, I heard insect. They are an insect. That's right. So they have six legs and they are an insect. And even though they're super duper cute, they can be a pest. So they can actually be a bad insect to have around. They have a ravenous appetite. They love to eat. And because they love to eat, if there was a whole lot of them on a certain plant, then what would happen is they would end up destroying that plant. So they could be a um, damaging animal. They could definitely harm a lot of plants if there was too many of them. All right, let's see. Um, Courtney, did we have any questions in the chat that I have missed so far? Let's see. I think I have to go back a little bit. Um, 
I think this one was about the scorpions. How many feet do they have? Oh, that is a great question. So scorpions are an arachnid, which means that they are related to a spider and they have eight legs. So spiders, tarantulas, scorpions, they're all arachnids. And yeah, they have eight legs. And what that means is that they have pinchers that are like antenna. So other animals, they um, have antenna, other invertebrates or arthropods. And they also, they kind of have antenna, but they use them as pinchers instead. Oh, um, I was actually talking about- Is there about, another one? Oh, oh. Um, I was actually talking about for the feet, um, for the football, remember when you two were you talking about the football field and you said half, they could, wait, the, the flying something like- The sugar gliders? Oh, the sugar glider? Yeah, yeah, they could, yeah, but like how much feet could they fly? Like how much feet? How much feet like? Oh, I do not do, I can't do math on the fly. So it's 60 yards. So however many feet in a yard and then divide it by that. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. And then the other question I see, do scorpions shed? Well, they do something called molting. So that's what arthropods do. Um, insects and scorpions uh, along with tarantulas. They do something called molting. And actually, I've got everything in here. I don't know what I don't have in this office, but um, this is a tarantula molt. You see those little holes right there in the middle? That's where this tarantula pulled its body out of this old exoskeleton. So scorpions do the same thing. They kind of get a crack in their bodies where their bodies have grown too big for their exoskeleton or their outer shell and they pull their bodies out. So instead of saying shedding zookeepers, um, we call it molting, but yes, they do. That is, that was a great question. All right, moving on over here. Let's talk about some elephant teeth. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, um, people think that elephants, they are, you know, if they're, whether they are African or Asian elephants, that they are, you know, elephants, right? But they have so many differences. There's a lot of differences. One of them is that their teeth, um, you can see that the Asian elephant's teeth, they have closer lines and the African elephant's more kind of like triangular lines. And that's because they eat different foods. Um, the African lives on the savanna and their food is usually harder. And then the Asian elephant, their food is usually softer because they live in the rainforest. And these are some, um, this is an elephant tooth. And an elephant only has four teeth in its mouth at a time, four teeth. Each tooth weighs between three and 11 pounds. So it just kind of depends on um, how big the elephant is, but they have four teeth, that's it. Um, and then this is the bottom of an elephant foot. You can see all those lines on there. And oh my goodness, a piece of poop, what? <laughs> Pretty funny, right? The reason why I'm showing a piece of poop on there is because elephants only digest 45% of what they eat, which means that if an elephant were to swallow a plastic bag, it would pass that plastic bag right out. It wouldn't digest it at all. So um, this is just part of an elephant tooth. That's only part of one. Because they weigh so much, the uh, elephant tooth, the actual tooth would be about this big. Can you imagine? That's a big tooth, isn't it? All right. Um, did we have any more questions, Courtney, that I missed? Let's see. Um, hmm. I have a few. One person asked, do you take care of any big animals like giraffes? <laughs> Um, I do not, not right now. The animals that I have are all small. I would be in trouble trying to fit a giraffe in this, in this studio. So thankfully I only have small things. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Um, so uh, this is the a picture of an owl skull. And I want you guys to look at where the ears are. So the ear openings, that is one right there. And this is another ear opening. And owl ears, um, they are not what we call symmetrical. They're not directly across from each other like our ears are. So I want you to take your fingers and if you were an owl, here, let's see. If you were an owl, you would have one ear up here and one ear down here. That's where your ears would be. But even though you might look a little strange, you would be able to hear really well because this ear could hear up and this ear could hear down. So owls have the best hearing of any animal on earth. So any animal ever tested in a lab, owls win the prize. And this is a little ear flap right here because people always ask me, well, wait, how do they not get water in their ear or dirt in their ear or wind when they're flying, right? Well, that's why, because they have a flap that covers their ear and that protects them from getting all the wind inside of there. Kind of cool. Um, this is an ostrich and ostrich has huge eyes, but they have very small brains. So an ostrich's eye is bigger than their brain. They have little tiny brains. Um, let's see, I'm going to check the chat. Who knows what this bird is right here? What are these birds, these pretty pink birds? Does anybody know what those are? Let's see, looking in the chat. Boop, flamingos. Lots of flamingo answers. Good job. Those are flamingos. And flamingos would not have their color if it wasn't for the food that they eat. So they eat shrimp that give them this color. And when flamingo babies are born, they are white. They are not pink at all. And I have a picture of a pigeon there because pigeons are actually one of the smartest birds there are. Um, crows and pigeons, super duper intelligent birds. But, come here pretty bird. Um, well, this little bird is pretty smart too. This is Piper, and Piper is a Myers parrot. Myers parrots come from Africa, and people always ask me if she is going to talk. Well, I wish she could, but she doesn't. Um, not all parrots can talk, and that's kind of surprising to a lot of people because, you know, we always hear about the parrots that talk. We don't really hear about the parrots that don't talk, right? But not all parrots talk. Um, Piper here, I've heard her say Piper. I've heard her say her name a couple of times, but it's pretty random when I hear her. It's not very common that I hear her say it. And I can only understand her because, probably because I want to understand her. <laughs> but if you heard her say it, you probably would not know that that's what she was saying. So not all parrots can copy sounds, but um, they are still very, very intelligent. So I've trained Piper to do a couple things. We're going to see if she wants to do some stuff for us. Piper, Piper, can you circle? Can you circle? Circle. Okay, can you wave? No, not scratch, just wave. <laughs> just wave. There you go. Good girl. All right. Now, <laughs> a couple of fun parrot facts is that um, parrots actually use their foot as a hand. So you can see she reached up and she was grabbing onto her delicious sunflower seed with her foot. And that's because they have different feet than other birds. So they have two toes in the front and two toes in the back. And most birds have three toes in the front and one toe in the back. So she has very special feet that help her to hold on to things when she is eating. So normally she would be holding on to maybe a nut or a seed or a berry, a piece of fruit. And those powerful feet with two toes in the front and two toes in the back are going to make sure that it doesn't fall. Because being up in the trees, if you lose your food, guess what? It's gone. Yeah, you're not going to fly down to pick it up, are you? So she has to be very, very careful about making sure that it doesn't fall down. And that's why she's got such great grip on it. And she's holding on tight right there to her delicious peanut. Now, another thing that parrots are really good at is being messy. 
So you can see in my hand, there's a big mess in my hand. Yeah, they're really, really good at being messy. And the best thing that they do is scream. Mm -hmm. That's what they are experts at. They are really, really loud. So their job in the rainforest and in the forest is to be messy and loud. Does that sound like a pretty good job for everybody? That'd be kind of fun, right? Being messy and loud. Well, being messy means that she's dropping a lot of food to the forest floor and other animals are going to be able to pick it up and get a free meal from her. And being loud means that if there's danger, she's going to set off a signal and she's going to send off the alarm that there is danger around so other animals can be wary and watch out for that danger. So being messy and loud has a purpose. There's probably no reason for us to be messy and loud, right? Not really have a purpose, probably not. Um, thank you, Piper. So Piper is not a baby parrot. Um, the type of parrot she is, that is what makes her small. Um, Piper is actually seven, almost eight years old now. So she is not a baby parrot at all. Okay, do we have any questions about Piper? I wasn't checking that chat. Domingo, what does Piper oh, yeah. eat? Yeah, what does Piper eat? Sorry. What does Piper eat? Okay. Um, so Piper actually eats, um, well, I feed her a pelleted diet. So something specially made for little parrots like her. But in the wild, she would eat um, nuts and seeds and berries. They would eat fruit, uh, sometimes certain leaves, uh, sometimes even certain barks off of trees, things like that. Yeah, did we have another question? How long do they live? I'm just Piper. Okay, so um, the smaller parrots, they live like Piper. They have a lifespan of about 30 years, but um, the larger parrots, the macaws, like the hyacinth macaw, can live over 100 years. That is a really, really long time. Um, so yeah, parrots are a lifetime commitment, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so learned about some fun birds. Um, everybody loves cockroaches, right? Yeah, thumbs up for cockroaches. Well, cockroaches are actually the ultimate survivors. Um, this one right here is eating a cookie, but you know what? There have been so many experiments done with cockroaches that they have found that they could eat anything at all and their bodies turn it into protein. So one scientist for an entire year fed the cockroaches a cardboard box and the other scientists fed their cockroaches um, pieces of carpet, so little carpet squares. That's all they ate for an entire year. Guess what? Both colonies of cockroaches, perfectly healthy. So they can literally eat anything at all and turn it into protein. So if I was able to do that, I think that I would, I would eat chocolate all the time. Yep, day, night, 24 hours a day. Um, this little guy right here is a ferret. And ferrets have actually been declared, um, the black-footed ferret have been declared extinct two times. They are the only animals that have been declared extinct two times. And that's because they have basically disappeared two times. But thankfully, um, come here, little monkeys. Come here, little pumpkins. Thankfully, um, they are no longer extinct. Um, in 1971, they were rediscovered. A little family of 18 black-footed ferrets were rediscovered and they were taken into zoos and they were protected. They started a breeding program. And since then, they have been able to release about 2,000 black-footed ferrets into the wild. So that is a huge success story from an animal that has been declared extinct two times. Um, but this is not a black-footed ferret, even though he does have little black feet. 
Bandit is a European ferret. And I'm going to show you Bandit's body because he's got a silly little body. He's got a long body that is super flexible. He's really, really flexible. He likes to bend and twist and turn. And um, he does do exactly the same things as the black-footed ferret lives in the same type of places, except for he comes from Europe. And they have been kept as pets over 2,000 years. So lots of people have kept them for a very long time and they are a very familiar companion animal. You are so silly. Yes, you are. All right. Um, so I see one question. Does he know any tricks? His trick is to be adorable. That's his trick. Yeah. But you know what? Um, as adorable as they are, they are kind of stinky. They do have a smell to them. It's kind of a musky smell. Thankfully, it's not like their cousin. Their closest cousin is the skunk. So thankfully, it doesn't smell like the skunk, but he still has a pretty musky smell. And I'm um, probably going to have it on my sweater here afterwards because, yeah, they kind of have it as an oil on their body and it seeps into things. All right. Um, did we have any other questions in there, Courtney? Uh, what, what do they eat, the ferrets? <clears throat> ah, what do the ferrets eat? <clears throat> so ferrets are carnivores and they hunt for prairie dogs and gophers. And that's the whole reason why they had the problem with um, being basically disappearing was because when farmers didn't want the gophers and prairie dogs in the fields because they were eating the crops, they got rid of the, far of the gophers and prairie dogs. And then that was the food and the shelter for the ferrets. So they didn't have food to eat and they didn't have places to hide. So that's why the ferrets started disappearing. But in the wild, their main diet is going to be gophers and prairie dogs and um, sometimes rabbits or moles, mice, things like that. Good question. All right, mm -hmm. let's see here. There we go. Okay. Raise, raise your hand button. So this is a millipede. And most people think that millipedes, they're called milla, that it might mean a thousand, I mean a million, but it doesn't. Um, milla actually means a thousand. And surprisingly enough, no millipedes have a thousand legs. Doesn't exist. The one that has the most legs is the California millipede. They have about 700 legs. But probably because they were thinking, okay, we can't call them like 700 apedes, right? That would be kind of weird, or 600 apedes. So they were like, Milla sounds like a pretty good thing. Yeah, we'll just call them millipedes. But same, same thing with centipedes. Centi means 100. And most of centipedes, they have between 30 and 70 legs. But they're not going to call them 70, uh, 70 apedes, right? So exact same thing. But this is a giant African millipede and her name is Millie and she has probably about 300 legs. So you can see those little legs crawling across my hand. They kind of tickle on my hand. I can feel each of those legs moving and she doesn't go left, right, left, right like we do. Instead, she uses her four segment, her four legs together from each segment. So each segment works one at a time. And that's why you see that little ripple when she walks. So it looks almost like a little ripple or a wave when she's walking. And that's because she's using, using each segment at a time or each segment apart from each other. Really cool. Um, so centipedes and millipedes, they are two different things. Um, centipedes, they are venomous. They can bite you and they will not feel very good, um, but they are carnivores, so they eat meat and they have to have that venom to capture their prey. Millipedes, they are herbivores, which means they eat plants. And because they only eat plants, they don't have to have anything that is dangerous. 
but because they are sometimes eaten by other animals, they do have a toxin inside their body called cyanide. So if an animal were to eat them, they would get pretty sick. They would have a wicked stomach ache, that's for sure. Um, Courtney, did we have any questions that you wanted to one share? Question, I've had one person ask, I guess about each of the animals, do they, their colors help them? Um, so I guess for the millipede and for the ferret and for the iguana, I guess, and the yeah. Yeah. So each, yeah, each, each animal's like body covering or color is going to help them to camouflage wherever they live. Yes, absolutely. Good questions. Okay. This is one of my funnest facts. Koalas have two thumbs on their front hands. So this is a koala's hand. You can see two thumbs right there. And then on their back feet, they have two connected toes um, and, well, two digits with connected toes and a thumb so they can grab on, but really their back feet are used for grooming. That's why they have such amazing hair because they are constantly brushing their hair with their back feet. And <laughs> koala fingerprints are very much like human fingerprints. And they have been mistaken for human fingerprints at times when they have found them in different places. They thought that they were human fingerprints when they were actually koala fingerprints. But yes, koalas have two thumbs. And even though people think that spider monkeys or monkeys can all hang from their tails, it is actually only the spider monkey that can use its tail as a um, hanging feature or a hand. So spider monkeys definitely can hang from their tail. You can see right here. And if you look at this picture right here, you can see these different lines and features. Um, a spider monkey's tail is kind of like our fingerprint. And every spider monkey has a different tail print. So you can tell who is who by looking at their tail print that they leave behind. Um, Never, if you've ever seen a chinchilla before, you know that they are a super fuzzy animal that has a lot of fur. They have about 60 hairs for every one of our hairs and chinchillas cannot get wet. If they get wet, then their hairs fall out and they would not dry. It takes them about three days to dry out. So they would basically turn into a chinchilla sickle in their home. And instead of taking a water bath, like most animals do, they only bathe in dust. They will never, ever bathe in water. Never, never. And last but not least, we're going to talk about some fun frog facts. So frogs swallow their food whole, which a lot of people don't know. They think that only snakes do that, but frogs also swallow their food whole. Um, and... If you turn a frog on its back and rub its belly, they will go to sleep. That will actually hypnotize a frog. So I have my froggy here. This is Prince and Prince is an African bullfrog. And because he can swallow his food whole, I want you to look how big his mouth is. It goes all the way from right there to right there. So he has a giant mouth. And because he has a giant mouth, he can swallow big things. Probably, you know what, if I gave him like a hamburger from McDonald's, he would be able to swallow it whole because he has such a big mouth. What? They swallow their food whole. They don't chew their food. They don't bite it into what? small pieces. And um, they also, if I were to turn him upside down and rub his belly, he would probably go to sleep. That would hypnotize him and make sure that I could check on him. And um, someone wrote, can you rub his tummy, please? <laughs> uh, I do that when I need to check on him. So if I need to do any kind of a physical check on him to make sure that um, he is doing okay, then sometimes I do that. So I will turn him over and rub his belly. And what? last but not least, um, 
I would like to thank everybody for my super fun zookeeper fact class. Um, let's see, Courtney, do we have any last questions? Yes, I saw. What? How slow are, are koalas? How slow are they? Well, they are pretty slow. Um, I'm not sure as like as far as um, how many miles per hour they go. That I cannot answer. But I do know that they are not, not very quick for sure. Okay. Are you, are you what, what do chinchillas eat? Mm. Um, so chinchillas are also herbivores, and that means no. that they um, they only eat plants. So that is all they are going to eat. Usually where they live, though, there's not like green grass or delicious plants to eat. So instead, they usually eat like bark off of trees and um, roots from trees, things like that. Okay. I think that yep. any others that I saw. And someone asked, why doesn't Piper talk? I thought you told us why, but maybe you can re remind us. <laughs> yeah, so not all, not all parrots can talk. There are, yeah, only about 60% of parrots will actually um, kind of repeat words or copy sounds. And, you know, it's just not something that she chooses to do. So it's really their choice, uh, whether they want to or not. But yeah, she doesn't. She chooses not to. She's like, I'll just look cute instead. <laughs> okay. So I think that's it. I think we answered about the color on the parrot that helps them in their environment. Um, and then I think everybody just wants you to rub the toad's belly. But <laughs> the rub the toad's belly, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, make her go, go to sleep. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, and then I do see up here, why, why are the ferrets stinky? Um, so they actually use their smell to rub and mark their territory. So they rub their on things like um, on rocks or soil or on trees or bushes and the ferrets will leave their scent or their oil there. So other animals know that they are there so they don't bother them because they do sleep in the homes of other animals like prairie dogs and gophers. So if they mark it, then they know that it's not a gopher or prairie dog there. They've marked it and told them, <laughs> nope, it's a ferret here. All right, did we get all those questions answered? I think we have, yes. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for um, coming and watching this program. And I hope, so. well, actually, we'll probably see you again. I think we've got, Courtney's got a couple of cool programs lined up with us, so you'll get to see those programs. So make sure to keep an eye on the Dallas on the um, website, the library's website, and look out for all of those fun programs that they have um, lined up, right? Did you want to say something else, yeah. Courtney, about any of the programs you've got coming up? I think that's it, because I can't remember off the top of my head with the other. I know we're doing one with um, a live elephant, and that's in March. So just like Cindy said, just keep watching our calendar for that and make sure you register. And next month we're doing something as well. I, I just can't remember which one it is. It might oh yeah, the whose be... is it? Yeah, the whose is it? Or whose yeah. is it? Yeah. Okay, the who's so is I think that, so that one's going to be a lot of fun and that will be next month as well. Um, but that's all I have. So I just want to say thank you, Cindy, for joining us and telling us all those cool facts about animals. Um, I think I learned a lot of things, too. So that was really cool. Perfect. That's what we're hoping for. <laughs> yes. So and thank you, everybody who came to uh, watch with us today. Um, and I think that's all I have. So I guess we can say goodbye now. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.